Hi, I'm Brandon. And I'm Mom. And welcome back to Tains and Talks TV. Yeah, thank you for joining us again today. Yes, I am very excited for us to be here. And Mom, I'm always excited to speak with you. I'm so excited to speak with you also, Brandon. So Mom, what series are we speaking about here today? Today, we're going to talk about Night Court. The original 1980s version of Night Court. Yes, this series originally debuted on the NBC network on January 4th of 1984, and it lasted nine seasons and 190 free episodes. It was produced by Starry Night Productions and Warner Brothers Television. And we're going to go ahead and head on to the episode. All right, sounds great, Brian. All right. In today's episode, we are talking about the premiere or the first episode that aired. Um, and this occurred in 1984. Um, and just to give you just a, a little backdrop just about the show itself, just very brief, um, the, the synopsis of the show, it is really about a judge who kind of hears the cases of various cases throughout the really the evening times. So in this particular episode, um, the judge, whose name is Harry Stone, he's the new night court judge. Um, everyone kind of meets him for the first time, and they're not quite sure if he's capable of being a judge. Um, everyone kind of disagreed about how he initially handled his first his first real case as a judge. And then he, at, to, at the end of the episode, he does gain some respect at the end of the episode. Well, Mom, thank you so much for the synopsis. You are welcome, Brandon. Yeah, and you can go ahead and go straight into your top ten. All right. So the topic of the day that I want to discuss are 10 things we kind of learned from this particular episode that kind of guide you through some of the other episodes that are that are um, that will happen for Night Court. Um, we learned that there is a new judge and his name is Harry Stone is the new judge. Um, the show itself does take place in New York City. Um, Harry was kind of although they knew a new judge was coming. Um, Harry himself was unexpected. They, the, the group who worked at the court did not know what Harry was, who Harry was, or anything like that. So the team did not know what type of judge to expect. Um, they had discovered that he was a judge who's kind of unorthodox about the processes and uses an informal method for making decisions about the cases that he does here. Um, there is a bailiff in this particular um, show, and the bailiff has some, uh, bailiff's name is Bull, and he does have some insecurities, um, which is actually just kind of suggested by the fact that he likes to learn and use new words. Um, we know um, the judge does, Harry does like Mel Torme and does not like Barry Manilow. Um, we know that the judge has a sense of humor, and that is very prevalent throughout the first particular episode that we did see. Um, we know that he may, that he probably is a musician, um, magician. Um, and I will say that I have seen several episodes of Night Court, the original series. So he was, even though they alluded to it, he really was a magician, um, throughout the series. Um, we learned something very interesting about how he was appointed to be a judge. Um, we learned that Harry was appointed because he was the only person home on a Sunday evening before the mayor's last day in office. And that's how he became a judge is because he picked up the phone on a Sunday evening. And then we also find something that's kind of interesting. We learned that the um, another one of the bailiffs who was on the show, um, her real name is Selma Diamond. But we do find out that um, her name is not mentioned at all during the first episode, or at least not the version that we saw um, that we saw online. His the bailiff's name is not mentioned. And typically, most of the characters are mentioned by name during the first episode. And so this is. We, of course, want you to watch the episode to know exactly what happens, but we just want to tell you a little bit about what we learned from the first episode, and because I'm a little familiar with the show, I know that these particular things that I mentioned are kind of are important to know uh, to guide you further as you're watching the show. And back to you, Brandon. Yeah, and thank you so much, Mom. You are welcome, Brand. So in really analyzing this episode, we oftentimes see numerous similarities within premiere episodes. And so going through the first one is the introduction of characters. So in this episode, we see um, that each of the characters are typically 
addressed by first and last names in their original introduction um, from everyone from the bailiff um, to the um, to the clerk. But what's interesting, though, is one of the other bailiffs, uh, Selma, she is not really introduced within this episode, but rather left as a as a person that only has a one liner really within the some of the final scenes of the episode. And we don't get her name in this, um, Mom, as you mentioned. And also in terms of plot devices oftentimes used um, for this introduction. In this episode, we actually just have um, Harry um, Harry Stone, the judge, um, moving into his office and having to um, sign off on, um, on new materials for his office. And that's when, when we really find out he's the new judge that they had been looking for for the past few minutes of the episode. And a lot of times a big change occurs to set up the series. And in this case, it is the arrival of Judge Stone and and find, finding out how exactly he got appointed to the judicial bench. And in terms of establishing a tone, we're able to see that quite a bit of the people who come in and out at night court, especially throughout this episode, are kind of outlandish, but yet also grounded at the same time. And... And yeah, and that is the analysis for this first episode of Night Court, All You Need Is Love. That's great, Brandon. And I agree with everything that you said that um, it is in- it was interesting how Harry was kind of introduced to the cast and that um, because he was new, he, he was able to, everyone was able to say what their first and last name was to him. Yes. And like I said, and especially with... Yeah, and especially with the way that um, it's done. So like I said, they need Judge Stone to sign off on the new paperwork. And they said, well, he's not here. It's like, oh, yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Done very well. Yes. So, Mom, now that we have seen this first episode, what, what, what do you think that we can take away from this episode? Um. Well, you could take away quite a bit from this episode. Um, first of all, it, um, I think at the time period that this came out, and I don't know if this is a basis for it or not, there were a lot of, and something you don't know, there were a lot of judge shows that were kind of came on at that time period, in particular Judge Wapner. I don't know if he was out at that time or not, but there were some shows that were beginning to come on air. And so, um, and so in comparison, it was nice to see how they could make a comedy out of probably some cases that were just out. And this is just me making it thinking out loud. Some cases that maybe they've seen on some of these shows and they're like, oh, well, let's make a comedy about this. I don't know. That's just me just speaking out loud. Um, but the show itself, um, I, I watched night court on and off so i was not consistent like some of the other shows that we've talked about um and so since i watched this on and off um i can say that some of the cases that i did see it was interesting to see what harry's take was on how he was going to rule in the case or how he um the characters kind of interacted with each other um they did go through i will i do know that the series did go through several um recast throughout the time period in which it was on and so but i think they always kind of had a spot where people kind of meshed together pretty well or at least on air they seemed to mesh together pretty well yeah and speaking of you know your time viewing the series so how much of the series have you seen mom Actually, Brandon, honestly, it was just in and out. I was overseas when it came on. And so I only saw for the first season. I may have seen the first season all the way through. I may have seen that all the way through. I don't recall many of the episodes, but I may have seen it. Um, After that, it's just been hit and miss. Um, So I probably will need to watch them over again. So it was fun watching this with you because I actually had memorized for the most part, the first episode. Um, But um, the other episodes after that, I'm not as familiar with. Yeah. And speaking of, you know, the original night court series, I had only seen the first four episodes and, and for the most part, well, actually take that back. I had seen the first four episodes and one episode of season two that you showed me. And so, 
And so for the first four, though, I watched those in preparation for the current Night Court um, series that has aired 2023 to present, in which I've seen all the episodes of that one. And so I was very excited for us to go ahead and head back to the original. And I personally look forward to, you know, to sort of catching up with the original over the course of this year. Oh, yeah. And Brandon, I know we really haven't talked about the one that's out now, but what are your thoughts in comparison, comparing both the two episodes together? or the two series together based upon what you've seen so far. Well, and even just comparing the, you know, the first episodes of both the series, I would say that something I appreciate about the original one is sort of the gravitas that, you know, that Harry has in this and that he takes full control of that courtroom that they don't even know who he is. And they probably think he's a tad crazy, which I don't blame them for, but yet everyone stopped and listened. And I think one of my, um, one of my favorite scenes and um, likely one of yours too, you can let me know, but is where Harry asks for silence in the court and for, um, and from no speaking from the, from the gallery. And they asked, are oohs and ahs acceptable? Yeah. Yes, that is very true. And so, yes, he does have um, extreme control over the particular courtroom, which I think differs a little bit from Abby from the court, from that court now. Um, you could say your thoughts about that, but I don't know necessarily if Abby has full control over the courtroom as he does. And one of the things also that um, that the audience might find interesting is that Abby is, is the daughter of um, of Harry. And so when she was brought in as a judge, it, they've made a point of saying that, you know, she is the daughter of Harry and that's how she kind of learned some of the things she did learn. Yes. And for anyone looking for context, um, Abby is the main character of the 2020 free to present series. And if you haven't seen that series, I definitely recommend, you know, recommend for you check that out and tune back into this discussion as well. Oh, yeah. Yep. And we'd love to hear, you know, down below, what is your preference, the 1980s version or the current version that's out now? Yes. And I will say, too, that uh, this episode that we just watched is directed by the uh, famous director, James Burroughs. And and for a little Tanson Talks uh, TV connection here is that he directed the first episode, of the revived um, Frasier series, we just spoke about a few months ago, um, that came out in 2023 and he also um, directed the first episode of the series Valerie old enough um yeah that we spoke about as well yeah that's amazing I guess our audience could tell though there are certain shows types of shows that we like and um with the certain directors yeah definitely and and I have always taken a note of like looking up the director's names because a lot of times it's the same people circulating throughout the different shows that we watch. And even though that we have not uh, seen the series, James Burroughs is most famous for being the co-creator of Cheers. Yes. Yeah. Maybe that'll be in one episode we speak about. Let us know in the, in below in the comments. Yeah, definitely let us know. And yeah, and I would say something, you know, that struck me too, is that when I watched the series, you know, for the first time, is I was actually really struck by Harry's age and, like, in just how young, you know, young he appeared within this first season and, you know, and commanding the courtroom. Uh, you have to tell me, did he say his age? I don't think he said his age in, you know, at least in this first episode right here, but mm -hmm. more so just his appearance-wise. The fact mm -hmm. that, you know, when, when you expect a judge to come in, and I think this is what struck them, too, is that you know, this, this young man, you know, just walks in and, um, yeah, I'm sure that all they can think of is how, you know, ill-experienced he is, but, but I think that adds all more to it as to, um, truly the power he has of the courtroom. Yep. That's true too. That's true too. And yeah, and mom, and you mentioned earlier too about, you know, the character of, um, of Harry Stone, of course, um, being somewhat a magician and to add on to that is the, uh, is that the actor for Harry, the uh, late Harry Anderson was also a magician in real life. Yes. Yes, he was. And he, um, um, I do remember him actually practicing or at least having some specials and things like that where he kind of showed that he was a magician. 
Yeah, and so yeah, it, it's really interesting to I mean to see these little connections, and I think it just makes such a a fun episode and a very unexpected one at that. Yes, it was. It was like I said. It's a very nice, you know, for the audience who has not seen it. You know, feel free to go take a look. It is a very nice and easy watch. And how would you say that this series holds up today in twenty twenty four? I think it does hold up today. Um, just because some of those viewpoints that may have seen a little extreme at the, at the time or may not be seen as extreme at this point in time. And so I think it holds up pretty well. Yeah. And I would say too, that, I mean, I don't know. What's nice is that it's sort of simple. You don't have to really think as much, at least for this episode and for the ones I have seen, but yet at the same time though, it's thought provoking because you, it sort of requires you to sit down and sort of think about it. But at the same time, it's not like a serious think about it. It's a silly, but I'm making a point. And it's like, oh, oh. Yeah, yes, it is. Like I said, I've got this episode kind of memorized. And so, yes, I remember watching it for the first time and thinking that, oh, okay, this is what they're trying to do. And, or as he says, um, I think when the character of Harry, he uses the word informal, because I put that in quotes when I was kind of going, looking through my notes, and that his informal method, I think, is really an interesting one to watch and to see how he kind of comes to his conclusions and what the court itself thinks about how he comes to his conclusions. Yeah, and one of the fun things about this episode is that uh, Harry has a... uh, a double-sided heads coin that he uses to make some of his decisions. And it's kind of funny because, I mean, mean, again, you you don't expect that sort of thing. And it's funny where you even have uh, Sheila, the the public defender in the episode saying, yeah, the client votes, yeah, the client hopes for heads. (laughs) Yes, that was funny. And of course it's a double-headed coin. So um, not to spoil alert, but yeah. So, so yes, it was fun how he, it was perceived how he was going to make a decision when in fact, you know, the, um, the plaintiff and defendant were able to kind of come up on the decision on their own. But yeah, so it definitely was a fun episode, but mom, this show of course has a theme song and what are your thoughts about the theme song? Uh, what is an instrumental theme song and so it was fine maybe i'll get it as give it a six or seven i mean it stands out but not like some other shows for standing out for theme songs yeah that makes sense and i said and even though i've only seen the series a few times i will say that at the very least it is a catchy theme song and and i, I mean i don't know listening to it really i think puts you right there into the tone and it's, i think it's just sort of as wacky as the series is yeah i think so too i think so too well mom is there anything else that you want to say or add um to this discussion well i will say if anyone in the um who's our viewers who are watching if they think there were other like i said i gave 10 thoughts that i thought were important to know not just for this episode but i think it's kind of important to know to help set the tone for the episodes to come if i left something out please let us know in the comments below and let us know about any other shows you want us to take a look at yeah definitely let us know and if you've seen this series you know who would you say your favorite character is well it's got to be harry Carrie would be my favorite character for this show. Yeah, I would say that for me, I don't know. Like, I definitely would say it would be Harry as well. But in terms of, like, a second favorite, I don't know. It would have to be, it'd have to be a tie between, you know, for second favorite, between Bo and Dan. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I can see how that can happen. At least we get to see, and and we didn't talk about this either, but in um, Night Court Part 2, per se, um, Dan does return. Yes, he does. And you'll have to tune in, you know, tune into that series to see how that goes out. Yep, you sure will. And if you want us to speak about the 2023 to present series, let us know in the comments and we'll be excited to watch it. Yep, we sure will. Well, Mom, thank you so much, as always, for joining me in these discussions. I always love doing this. Yep, I love doing it too, Brandon. Look forward to next week. Yeah, thank you so much, and we will see you next time. All right, bye-bye, everyone.